what's up with my steering? Occasionally when it's cold out and I just start my car, my steering feels a little weird. Sometimes it's really heavy, like there's no power steering assist. Sometimes I feel a little bit of judder, where it's kind of jerky. Um, by the time I get to the end of the block, the problem has gone, and as long as the car is warmed up, I don't experience the thing again. Now, uh, I've been living with this probably with, for at least half a dozen years, but I figured it was time to actually get to the bottom of it. The car is, after all, 17 years old and power steering fluid doesn't last forever. So what's going on with the power steering system? Now the power steering system in the Aston is pretty much the same that's in most modern uh, cars. It's a hydraulic pump system. So there's just a couple of parts to it. There's a plastic reservoir that holds the power steering fluid. Uh, it has a hose that goes down to a power steering pump. And this is a hydraulic pump that just basically takes the fluid, pumps it up to pressure, and then it goes down to the steering rack that has some fancy valves um, and pistons. So when you turn the steering wheel, it helps you move the steering one way or the other. The fluid that's left over from that, then the spent fluid comes back up to the reservoir, dumps in under low pressure, and gets reused again. So it's a closed system that just basically uses hydraulic fluid. If you actually look at the lid of the power steering fluid reservoir, it says ATF fluid only. And that's because automatic transmission fluid is just hydraulic fluid. Um, so you could probably use any old um, hydraulic fluid, any old transmission fluid in there. But if you crack open the uh, Aston Martin owner's manual in your glove box, it's going to tell you uh, if you have an early car like mine, I have a 2005 DB9, to use Texaco cold climate power steering fluid. Um, now. Uh, that was really only used in Jaguars and in Aston Martins back in the day, and uh, Ford owned both of them at the time, so they probably had some contract with Texaco. And, uh, you know, it was hydraulic fluid, it worked. But along came Field Service Bulletin uh, SB-11-0300. And this one is entitled Squeak from the Steering Column, which is a bit of a strange name. But basically, this article goes on to tell the dealers that the, uh, many owners have been starting to have some weird steering performance. They could get a squeak out of the steering when you were turning it. Um, and as it, we see in my particular case, you'd get that steering judder could start to occur. And they faulted the system being the Texaco cold climate fluid. Um, and this article basically goes on to say, you need to flush out all the Texaco cold climate and replace it with Pentosin CH11S uh, power steering fluid and add some Lubrizol um, that I'll tell you about in a minute, which is sort of this magic uh, lubricant uh, chemical. So those two things combined sort of tune up the hydraulic system to keep all the seals good. This works better in cold temperatures apparently and the steering judder and the squeaking issues go away. So if you have uh, an early model car like mine that this bulletin applies to, so this basically says it covers uh, V8 Vantage up to car number C13358, the DBS up to car number E01351, and the DB9 up to A12418. So that's basically the first 13, almost the first 13,000 DB9s uh, this issue applied to before they changed their mind on the fluid. Uh, so if you haven't had yours uh, changed out and it's the original fluid in the car, you'll probably want to do it. Plus, like any hydraulic fluid, I think you should probably you know, flush and change the fluid every five to seven years. Um, my car is 16 years old. The fluid's never been changed as far as I'm aware, so it's due for a flush. Let's go ahead and get it done and I'll show you how now. We need a few tools, uh, obviously, to do the power steering flush. Um, and so let's go through them here. Uh, I've been following field service bulletin from Aston Martin on how to, to do the flush. Uh, you'll be able to get this off my blog uh, or just watch the video here. Um, I have my quarter inch torque wrench, my quarter inch ratchet, my short quarter inch extension, and an eight millimeter uh, socket uh, for removing some bolts. I also have an eight millimeter uh, 
uh, ratcheting combo wrench uh, to make my life a little easier. Um, I have spring clamp plier. Uh, this is for basically a way to easily take off some of uh, the spring clamps. Uh, you could probably substitute a regular set of pliers and a bunch of frustration uh, if you don't have one of these. It'll also be handy to have uh, a hose pick. So basically this, uh, you'll see me using this in the video for basically breaking the seal on the hose. You could also substitute maybe a long, small uh, flat blade screwdriver to do the same job and add some frustration. Uh, trusted ins my trusty inspection light, uh, shop towel, and now a couple of other specialty tools. This is my Mighty Vac uh, vacuum brake bleeder, uh, but basically this is a suction straw, so I'm going to use this to suck the fluid uh, out of the uh, reservoir. Uh, you could use a turkey baster, um, you know, a bulb type squeeze, suck it up type thing. So you need something where you can suck the old fluid out. Uh, so if you don't have one of these, you know, you can sneak in and steal your uh, uh, Christmas turkey turkey baster. Another kitchen implement you're probably going to need is that we have to monitor the fluid temperature when we're in the final steps to get it up to 100 degrees C. So um, I had an extra thermocouple uh, oven thermometer set up here uh, that we, I'm going to use. I'm not going to put this back in the kitchen afterwards, uh, but that's going to be useful when we're doing the, um, the final step of the process. So let me show you what uh, uh, parts and supplies we need next. So we need a few supplies. Uh, to complete the project, obviously. Um, first off, we need two liters of Pentosin CHF11S. This is the new power steering fluid we're going to flush in. Um, probably going to use somewhere between a liter and a half and two liters, so uh, I have a couple uh, one liter cans. Then you need your magic elixir. This is Lubrizol. This is a 50 milliliter bottle. Um, and uh, this one happens, I bought it from Mercedes, but I'll have a link to uh, where you can track down uh, this Lubrizol power steering additive. You need a whole bunch of supplies. This is a messy uh, process. So um, I have my pig mat. You could just use paper towels or something, but pig mat is like very absorbent a towel. So I'm gonna need at least one big flat square sheet. And then I took a one of those sheets and I fold it in half and then half again to make a four ply thick one. Because imagine when the fluid's dripping on it, it could just drip right through a single sheet. It'll wick out a bunch, but if you have uh, a layer that's four, four layers thick, we're gonna be able to put that right under where the drip's happening and it'll be able to absorb a lot of uh, the dripping oil. Uh, another thing that we might do, uh, utilize is I got a small, this is a small sour cream container uh, that you can put underneath where the drip is happening. We're going to be working in a tight space, so it couldn't be anything bigger than this. Um, and so I've got that to try and catch some of the fluid. So then uh, we're going to need some uh, rubber glove or shop gloves. I'm going to show you an unusual use for one of these at the uh, end of the video when we're doing the uh, temperature test. Uh, I have a, a, a one gallon milk or distilled water jug. Uh, this is going to be where I'm going to catch all the old fluid uh, that com per comes out. So again, about that liter and a half that goes in, the old fluid uh, that purges out, I'm going to catch in this bottle and then dispose of safely. Um, I've got a half inch ID hose uh, and I've got six feet of that. And we're going to use that in conjunction with a half inch uh, hose barb. Uh, for basically coupling up, we're going to basically insert this into our hose and then connect into the power steering hose uh, to purge out the fluid. I just picked this up at the local hardware store. I also have a, a, about a one inch uh, band clamp so I can basically tighten and clamp that on. Um, I snipped off about a two to three inch piece of the hose and I have my trusty shop uh, rubber stoppers. This is a double zero size one. And I'm going to put this together like that uh, to make a, a plug to go over the uh, spout on the reservoir once we've disconnected it. So that's going to be a handy tool. And then the last items here is I've used my brother P-Touch label maker and I've made two labels that say Pentosin CHF11S. 
and uh, you'll see me use these to label the manual and the reservoir later on in the video. So uh, let's get to it. So before we get started over at the car, we need to get our drain hose assembly sort of cut to length and get ready so we can use it. So I'm gonna use uh, just a milk jug, a pl old plastic milk jug to drain the fluid into. Uh, you can invent your own way, but essentially I'm gonna probably have that on the floor and I bought myself a bunch of fluid and I'm gonna have to connect essentially a hose that reaches all the way down to there. So that's probably how much I need, which is six feet. Uh, so let's go over here to the bench and I'm gonna cut this off. Better a little bit too long than too short. All right. So now um, I'm gonna take my half inch ho uh, brass hose barb and my hose clamp. And I'm just basically gonna get this all set to go. All right, so now we have our six foot piece of hose with a half inch coupler hose barb that I'll be able to put into the low pressure return line. And uh, we've got it ready to use when we need it. All right, well, let's get started with the actual dirty work. Um, the very first step uh, is gonna be that we're gonna drain the existing uh, reservoir. And <clears throat> before I even do that, one way you can tell that yours probably is not running the, uh, the pentosin fluid is this right now says ATF oil only. Uh, one of the steps that the factory prescribed was this should say Pentosin CHF 11S uh, when we're done. So we're gonna be putting a label on at the end. So let's get it opened up. And uh, now we're gonna use, uh, you could use your turkey baster, where basically we're gonna try and suck out the existing dirty fluid to at least start and uh, you could get in here with a turkey baster and spit it into an uh, old plastic bottle. I'm actually gonna use my uh, vacuum extractor, uh, which runs off compressed air. All right, with the, uh, the compressor noise segue completed, uh, here's how much, you know, we basically got uh, a goodly amount of fluid out. You know, I think that's about 200 milliliters. Uh, it's the top half of the, you know, the reservoir, I think. And uh, I'm gonna set this aside. All right, so we're gonna reinstall the cap because we're gonna be uh, flipping this around and moving things. So you'll see here, I've also done a couple of things to make filming more possible. You probably won't do the same exact same things, but in your car, you're, you're gonna have a whole air intake charge tube and a throttle body here. Now I had my throttle body off because I'm doing my oil filter change right now, uh, but that sits right here along with the electrical. And that's what this would hook up to. And then there's a black uh, air intake tube and I've kind of, I've disconnected it from the air box and moved it aside so we'll have lots of room to film. And I've removed the engine slam panel uh, because getting to this, these two bolt, this particular bolt with the slam panel ha hanging over it um, probably can be done, but it's maybe gonna be a little bit more difficult. So I took that off as well. So uh, you'll be able to see more clearly what I'm doing during the process. You can do, theoretically do all this with the throttle body and the air intake tube in place, uh, but uh, it's gonna be considerably more difficult. So um, anyways, you can decide for yourself. Check out my video above for how to remove the throttle body and my video on how to remove the slam panel. So let's get started uh, by removing uh, the three bolts that hold the reservoir in place. Uh, all of them are eight millimeter and uh, uh, All right, so we remove this bolt entirely. 
Uh, that's going to let us start to move this, but I'm not going to try and pull this out yet. I'm going to take off the bracket entirely next. So I can remove this one also with the ratchet. So you can see I've also uh, put some a fender cover in place because I'm working close to the paint here. Um, we're also going to have some fluids and oils here, so I definitely recommend a fender cover. So this guy is a little trickier to get. Uh, we can't get on it with a socket, so I have a, a ratcheting box end wrench. Uh, here we go, we've got the last screw out. So rather than trying to pull the bottle out of the bracket, I'm going to take the bracket off the bottle. So I'm going to spread the bracket a bit and then just work it up over the shoulder um, of the bottle and uh, set this aside. So now we can actually, now, <laughs> once you've accomplished that, if you have all this other stuff in place, you aren't gonna be able to do this particular scene, but this is why I've removed this, is so I can show you these two hoses. The top hose, this is the fluid out to the pump pipe. So this is the fluid that leaves the reservoir and goes to the pump uh, the power steering pump intake. This pump with an actual removable hose clamp is the low pressure return line and it fills up the reservoir. Uh, so the fluid coming back dumps into here. And uh, so we're gonna be taking this connection apart. Now, as we take this connection apart, we are going to spill fluid uh, into this area. So my next steps here now are going to be uh, mess control. Um, so I know this is about where I'm gonna have it when I take it apart. So this is where our pig mat and our plastic containers is gonna come in. So I'm gonna put a layer of pig mat down just as a general overall catch in the area. And you'll think, ah, that's good enough. Enough fluid's gonna come out, it's gonna spill, it's gonna find the low spot and it's gonna soak right through and keep on dripping. So that's where our four-folded Pig mat will give us four extra layers for it to absorb and distribute. And when it's actually time to separate this, this is where our little plastic container, it's gonna be dripping and you're gonna be like going, ah, what do I do? Well, hold this container and this will catch, enough. this is big enough to catch the amount of fluid that's gonna come out. And these three things combined, you should be okay. So now, we're going to go ahead and separate the hose clamp and I'm going to use my uh, spring clamp pliers. You could just use a regular set of pliers, but this is one of the ones that actually is designed for this type of hose clamp. Get on with one side, get on with the other. And here's where I would make sure that there's a little bit of lubrication on the hose. My hose is a little bit wet because in true full disclosure, I've done this already once to make sure I could do it. Um, so if you, this is dry and crusty, maybe get a little WD-40 and give this a spritz because you want this, uh, the clamp to be able to slide down the hose an inch or two. So I'm going to clamp this and move it and release the pliers. So it's easy peasy when you have one of these. So uh, our next challenge is this hose has probably been on your car for 15 years and never been off and we have to get it separated. So you could either use a flat blade screwdriver or I'm actually gonna use a hose pick. And this is designed to get underneath the hose and to start to crack it loose. And you can actually manipulate it to get all the way around. So how you would do this if you couldn't get full access to this, I think you'll be struggling with breaking this connection. Um, but we're basically, I already know I can move this a little bit. I want to maybe try and get this to move off about a quarter inch just so I know it's ready to go. Okay, so it's starting to separate. So it's time, we're almost at the point where we're going to make a hellacious mess. So I'm going to get my little plastic cup down there to be ready. We'll see how that works out at the time. Uh, before you pull this off, I want to make sure I have my little rubber stopper. This is the one I'm uh, anticipating is the right size to jam in the end of the pipe coming out of the reservoir to keep it plugged up. 
and I have my hose barb that I'm gonna jam into the end of this hose uh, that we'll use to drain the fl fluid in a little bit. So those things are ready. All right, so here we go. Pull it off. It's not dripping too much. Grab our stopper for that. Push it on, we're good. And we're not really getting too much mess out of this either. We fit that hose onto there. We only had a little bit that fell into the cup and uh, I'm good uh, everywhere else. So that worked out okay. And I think the success of how much you spill here is how well you get it evacuated before uh, you pull the hose off. So we're ready. We've got essentially uh, our bypass line now for catching the uh, old fluid. So let's move on to um, purging the old fluid out of the system. All right, we've kind of got the first phase done where we've got the reservoir disconnected. So here, just before I start doing it, you'll see I've got the, uh, the low pressure return line coupled up and it's gonna basically drain down. You don't have to do something this fancy. You could just do something here, but I wanted to be able to catch the shot and I've got it running down into a milk jug here on the floor. I've just got the pry bar weighting the jug down so it doesn't flop around because it's empty right now. So hopefully we'll get a shot of the dirty fluid coming out. So the next phase of the process actually happens in the car. Um, we have to basically get in and keep the engine off the whole time. Do not think that you're gonna use the power steering pump to actually do the purging. Uh, you will run the pump dry and could damage the pump. So we're gonna be moving the steering wheel back and forth ourselves manually, and that's gonna do the pumping action. So I'm gonna hop in and I need to turn the key, at least so I can turn the steering wheel. And I, you have to have the car off the ground uh, you could have the wheels on, but basically uh, you need to be able to, you know, turn the wheel without a lot of resistance. So the process is, and I'll start doing it and it'll start pumping some fluid, turn the wheel slowly all the way to the left. And already we already have fluid up the pipe. And once we get all the way to the left lock, we're going to go back at a reasonable pace all the way to the right. And that's actually moving the piston inside the power steering uh, mechanism back and forth, and that causes the pumping action. And we're gonna repeat this process 10 times. So back to the left. Back to the right. That's two. Back to the left. Back to the right. That's three, back to the left, back to the right. Back to the right and then back to center. Okay, so key off, that's our 10 times. So uh, I noticed that around the fifth or sixth cycle, we really stopped getting any big gushes of additional fluid. It seems to be just whatever residual that's left here now. And uh, if we come down and look at the, the bottle, you know, we probably got two to 300 more milliliters in there. Um, and that's fine. So uh, the next thing we're gonna do is the uh, flush cycle. So we're going to uh, essentially refill this reservoir with brand new fresh pentosin fluid, not the lubrizol. Essentially, we're gonna put a sacrificial load of fluid in here, and then we're gonna do the same process, and that's gonna push the last of the dirty fluid out, and hopefully by the end of this cycle, we're gonna start to see clean fluid coming. Okay, so, uh, I've got the power, the reservoir in at least a sort of upright position and we're going to open it back up 
So you definitely want to make sure you've got your plug on the bottom. <laughs> and now I'm going to refill the reservoir as full as I can uh, with fresh Pentosin CHF11S. This has kind of got a green color to it. This is sort of the end of this can I had available. So that was probably only 100 milliliters. Now I'd suggest you keep your old cans because it'll be a great way for you to at least hold your old fluid. So this is a brand new bottle or can here. And you can use a funnel. All right, so I filled that way beyond the max line, uh, which you would measure with the, uh, the dipstick. But I did that on purpose, because this is all sacrificial. We're gonna basically uh, pump, do the whole purge thing again now, and this is gonna push through and hopefully flush out uh, some more of the, the old fluid. Uh, and I've still got the pig mat, you know, sitting down there, uh, ready to catch anything uh, that were to drip or whatever. So the next step is we're gonna hop back in the car and I'm gonna do 10 more cycles back and forth and we're gonna see how this, this looks. All right, so all the way to the left. All the way to the right. That's one. All the way to the left. All the way to the right. That's two, all the way to the left. Well, that's been interesting. So I've, I probably did that actually not just 10 times, I probably did it 20. Um, it was very slow. We were getting a little bit of additional fluid each stroke. Um, and then around stroke 10 or 12, it started to really, it's like the pump got primed or the mechanism got primed again. And then uh, we got a, a Probably we've now doubled the volume in here, um, but it's still pretty gunky looking. And uh, uh, I haven't changed the fluid in 15 years. I've got plenty of pen new Pentosin fluid. So I'm gonna open the reservoir here and check the level. Cause I think I've depleted it again and I have. So I'm just gonna repeat the process here uh, a few more times then until I'm getting uh, a mostly clean green solution out, I hope. So this will be in fast forward and we'll probably just uh, hit you with the highlight reel. All right, well that is about what I wanted. Um, I don't know, maybe if you look from the top right now too. Uh, you can see I've got a pretty clear green solution, which is the mostly all new fluid. That took about a liter and a half of new Pentosin to purge. So I used about a can and a half um, to uh, go ahead and finally get it to the point where we were pumping through clear fluid. Let's go ahead and get the reservoir reassembled. All right, so now I wanna basically get the hoses off and reconnected the way they were. Um, we of course have a substantial risk of making a mess now, because that for sure is full of fluid. <laughs> and uh, uh, I've got a big wad of this uh, fluid sitting in here as well. So this is gonna spill somewhere. So I definitely wanna make sure my pig mat is right where I have it, but I can do this in stages at least now. Um, so I'm gonna start by removing this hose. Once the air gets in here, most of this is gonna go down into the uh, reservoir. And then hopefully I catch the rest in this. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna drain this into the bucket. So that's in place. Um, I can basically tip that over, drain a little bit out. So now, so you want to probably check your reservoir. If you hadn't quite purged this out on your last uh, flush, 
and there's any fluid in there, you could use your turkey baster or your uh, vacuum extractor again to suck at any of the residual clean fluid. Uh, mine's actually empty. So hopefully I just have a little bit that's uh, gonna be lurking uh, in the bottom of this hose connection that I need to work it. All right, that's it. So that went pretty well. Next up, we're gonna reconnect the low pressure hose, pushing it all the way in uh, until it sits flush on the shoulder on the pipe. And there's one other thing to point out here. There's this white line. This is actually the designed, it's supposed to point at this raised ridge on the plastic. So this should all be in line. Uh, basically that way you know the hose is draped in the right position. Um, you wanna have a little bit of lubrication, not a problem right now on this hose because we're gonna slip, use the hose clamp pliers and slip this back up into position. The correct position is again shown on the hose. We wanna have the hose up in between the two white ends and the main center line of the clamp right on the center line of that. So I'm a little off to the side now, so I'll just kind of realign that as I pull it together. So basically getting the center of the clamp in place. There we go. So now with that uh, restored, uh, I'm gonna suggest you get a rag and you really go to town cleaning up. <clears throat> uh, particular the hose itself, what I'm, I know I would be worrying about is if I look in here after the project's done and I look down and I see the hose glistening and wet, I'm gonna be thinking that uh, I've got a leak, uh, so that'll be freaking me out. So go ahead and take the time now, um, polish up all the hoses. You can take out your pig mat um, and uh, uh, you know use whatever you need to do to clean this up. Okay, I've got the reservoir uh, pretty spiffy, as spiffy as I can get it. Um, and uh, so I'm ready to put, start putting it back together. So this is basically, we're gonna be reversing our steps. Um, so I've still got this expanded and I'm gonna slip it down over top the reservoir loosely. And then I'm gonna put probably this bolt in just loosely to start, just to help hold it up in place. And I'm gonna fit the rear one. Oh, that, technically that's the front one. So these are, as I said earlier, these are just eight millimeters. There is a torque spec of 10 Newton meters. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to get my torque wrench on this one. So I'm gonna use the official Aston 1936 uh, calibrated snug. I'm not snug. This one I can take up the slack. Since I have a torque wrench here in handy, along with the socket, why not torque it properly? And then the final bolt is the clamp. So now I'm gonna worry about uh, positioning my, the reservoir. So you need to think about it. And then cameraman, if you can swing all the way around my shoulder here, you can see this notch in the reservoir and this white line. Because uh, we don't want the reservoir twisted. It's gonna put stress on the hoses and maybe kink them. So basically we're aiming for uh, the notch lined up with the white line. And also basically, you know, you want the reservoir just sort of resting down on the shoulder of the, uh, uh, the bracket. So you could probably switch back to the other side. And I found to get this to go, 
to come straight in from overhead. I'm pinching the bracket together with my left or my right hand and then starting the threads with my left. And once you have it started, you still can do all sorts of adjusting. So I've got that sort of in place now. And I'm holding it you know, in position with my left hand. And you'll do this basically all the way up. And this gets, also gets torqued to 10 Newton meters. As I'm doing this, I'm having my thought of, this is probably the only time in the life of the car that I'm ever gonna do this. <laughs> All right, so bolts torqued, and we're basically back in position on to refilling it. All right, with the reservoir completely reinstalled and cleaned up around it, I don't want any dirt getting inside. Uh, it's time for us to actually put the, uh, the real fill in. So um, first off, I wanna point out there is a min, and there's no words min and max, but basically there's this line here that's embossed in the stem. That's the minimum, and this line here that's the maximum. So uh, I'm not too worried right now. I'm gonna, you know, we're definitely gonna fill it up to the max, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, because in the next phases, we're gonna sort of burp the air out of the system. Uh, so anyways, I pointed that out. So now it's time to refill for real. And the very first thing we're gonna put in is the magic elixir, the Lubrizol. Um, Aston Martin Service Bulletin basically says you're supposed to add a bottle of Lubrizol. Uh, this is a 50 milliliter bottle. And uh, I would suggest making sure you've got in a good shake, shake up uh, uh, if there's any crud on the bottom because it's been sitting on the shelf, you want to basically get that incorporated because uh, I think this is basically a bunch of magic um, sort of Teflon or something else that's going to help the system. And you're supposed to add the entire bottle of Lubrizol. All right. And then we are gonna to top up the system with fresh Pentosin CHF-11S. And I'm gonna be aiming for the maximum level, which I think is just gonna be covering uh, this top plastic thing. Yeah, maybe just a tiny bit more. Probably tough to see on camera, I apologize. You'll do fine figuring it out. Now this little glob of goop that's in here, that's the Lubrizol additive. It came out of the bottle. I think that's just stuff that it hasn't blended in yet. Uh, I'm gonna check the level. I'm at the minimum. Okay, so keep adding. And I'm now at the maximum. So I'm gonna call that good. And now we're gonna move on to the next phase. All right, uh, so uh, as crazy as this procedure is, uh, I've now got the car down on the ground. I put the front wheels on. Uh, the wheels will need to be on because there has to be some resistance in the steering for these next steps. I've also moved the car outside the shop because we're gonna be running it for about probably 10 minutes. So first up, we're gonna open the power steering reservoir. We're gonna check our fluid level. And it's down some now, because that was the first time I had the car running uh, since we purged the fluid and topped it up. So I'm just going to top it up again. So we're at the max mark when we start the process. Yep, we're good. So, so next up, they actually want us to have the cap off. Uh, 
and they're gonna this is where we're gonna use the temperature probe essentially they want us to get the fluid up to hundred degrees Celsius during the step and I'm worried about this kind of splashing around a bit so I'm just gonna take a, a glove and slip it over top the reservoir and now I have my thermocouple probe which is don't tell my sweetie uh, it's Thanksgiving so you know <laughs> and I'm just gonna stick that in there and I have that uh, back here so it's reading out in degrees Celsius uh, because essentially we're going to run the uh, the engine and strain the power steering until we get the fluid up to hundred degrees Celsius and then that's when we're going to do the rest of the uh, the steps so the probes installed I have this set to alarm at 95 degrees C when it gets there uh, I just have the probe sitting bottomed out in the reservoir and uh, next up we're going to start the car so the process at this point is we're supposed to start the engine and so then they want us to turn the steering wheel to the 90 degree to the right point so I'm 90 degrees to the right they want us to bring the engine RPM up to about 2,000 RPM and we're going to hold it at 2,000. And then they want me to put just some gentle pressure on the steering to the right to the point where it doesn't turn though. So that's why we have to be on the ground is that the power steering pump is going to be trying to push against the wheels right now that aren't turning and we should see the fluid temperature starting to go up. We go up to about 35. All right, so they say this procedure where we just sit here and hold some pressure on uh, should take about eight minutes uh, at 2000 RPM uh, to get the power steering fluid up to 100 degrees C. So let's wait it out. Hey, you're at 97 and climbing. All right, so we're within five degrees of 100 now and I'm gonna let the pressure off and let the engine go back to idle. <clears throat> so we're supposed to do all the rest of the process with the engine between 800 and 1000 RPM. So basically at idle. Um, so we're gonna do uh, a bunch of turning the steering wheel stuff. So I'm still at the 90 degree to the right mark. They want us to turn quickly all the way to full lock and hold it for two seconds but no more than two seconds because of the fluid at this temperature, they say that can do some damage. So quickly all the way to full lock, two seconds, and then back to 90 degrees, and we're gonna repeat that eight more times. So I need to hold it longer at one Mississippi, two Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Okay, so now they want us to repeat that same procedure now on the left, counterclockwise. So I'm now 90 degrees to the left, and it's gonna be all the way to full lock, two seconds at full lock and back and do that eight times. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. All right, so now that we've got that done, basically we can shut the car off, pull it back into the shop, and we just have a couple of last things to finish up. So we have a couple of last steps to finish up, and the first thing I wanted to do is just to give you a sense of how dirty the old fluid was. Can't even see through it with the light. Um, basically that's power steering fluid that's done its job. It's basically supposed to collect the dirt in the system as it runs. And uh, that's what the old black fluid came out looking like. The new fluid was sort of a dark creme de menthe green. 
uh, the Pentosin. So the Aston Martin wants us to update the owner's manual uh, to show uh, that it now uses Pentosin fluids. So if you go to the fluids and capacities page, you can see the old reference here to power steering fluid Texaco cold climate. Uh, they want us to basically put a sticker in there uh, that says it's supposed to be Pentosin now. Uh, so I went and used my big surprise. I have a brother P-Touch label maker and I made a, a label that said Pentosin CHF 11S and then I used a pair of scissors and I trimmed around it uh, very closely to make this label which should fit in there. So we'll go ahead and fit this over the Texaco and that's gone forever. All right, so the manual's updated. So let's go ahead, we have to, one more label they want us to apply on the actual uh, pressure, uh, the power series reservoir cap. So over here at the reservoir cap, uh, right now it has an embossed ATF oil only on it. Um, they want us to put a label on here that says Pentosin CHF 11S. So what I did is I made a black label with my label maker and I've trimmed it. And I'm just going to fit it across the center of the cap. There we go. So we're almost there. Everything is labeled, everything is purged. The last thing I'm gonna do is check uh, now that it's been sitting for a minute, that the uh, fluid is at the right level, at least it's up to the max. Ideally, you should be doing this cold. And yep, I'm up to the max level, so we're good. Well, if you're still with me at this point, I'm amazed. But that was the most steps I've ever had to do to flush the power steering fluid before. Leave it to Aston Martin. But at this point, my steering feels good. Uh, the judder should be gone. I won't really know again until I'm uh, starting on a cold day. I know I've got fresh fluid in there, which makes me happy. So uh, down here, you'll find the companion blog article. It'll have links to the tools. It'll have links to the Pentosin fluid where you can get it. Um, it'll also list the uh, Aston Martin Field Service Bulletin that I've been following as my guide. Uh, up here, you'll probably find uh, uh, some other interesting uh, video related to fluids. Uh, down here, you can go ahead and subscribe if you like to receive videos like these and get notified automatically. And as always, I'd love to hear your comments. If you take on this project, I'd love to hear how it went for you. Please leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching.